the city of verona might have lost its bridges might have lost its building but not the charm and gaiety if they found anything which could get them some money they would put their hands there but no cheating hello hi namaste and welcome to vidyashram the temple of excellence i am nanda kishor faculty of english in vidyashram mysore in my previous session i had discussed about the chapter frederick douglas an excerpt from his own autobiography and i'm sure you have watched all my previous videos if you have not watched it yet subscribe to vidyashram youtube channel and start watching right away in today's session i am going to discuss about the chapter two gentlemen of verona written by aj cronen let us start with today's session who is aj cronen he is the author of two gentlemen of verona and he is a scottish novelist and physician whose works combining realism with social criticism won a large anglo american readership so he is basically a physician and also a writer in simple there is something called pre reading activity what is the pre reading activity why is it so important it gives just a glimpse or just a link to the chapter that we are about to study what words or phrases come to your mind when you think of the qualities of a gentleman if the word gentleman is asked describe the word gentleman how would you describe who is a gentleman according to you it says for instance is he well dressed or courteous or soft spoken or something more what characters attribute to the word gentleman who makes or who is a gentleman basically discuss in what way these words are an appropriate description of a gentleman you can discuss with your friends amongst your family members or you can just question yourself so who is a gentleman how should be a gentleman so what makes a person a gentleman and uh, moreover at the end of this chapter you will get to know the answer why this chapter is named as two gentlemen of verona so let's start with two gentlemen of verona here the text the text begins as we drove uh, who is we here the author along with his friends as we drove through the foothills of the alps alps is nothing but the mountain ranges the mountains two small boys stopped us on the outskirts of verona where did they stop him outskirts of verona verona is a place in italy it is a city they were selling wild strawberries one mark question what were they selling they were selling wild strawberries and bright scarlet berries that looked delicious against the dark green leaves lining with a wicker basket so they have just a big basket and they have lined it if you just visit nearby areas in and around your city on the streets you will get to see people selling uh, peaches people selling pomegranates let's say people sell guava while selling guava they will have the leaves along with the fruit so this is the same re resemblance here and what are they selling they are selling wild strawberries and bright scarlet berries bright scarlet berries don't buy there is a voice coming up don't buy want luigi this is a scottish name it is pronounced as luigi so luigi our cautious driver who is he the cautious driver he says don't buy you will get food much better in verona besides these boys look at these boys no want he shrugged his shoulders to convey his disapproval of their shabby appearance so luigi says don't buy no 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 don't buy look at them my god don't buy look at the appearance of these two boys one boy had on a worn jersey and cut off khaki pants the other one boy is wearing worn jersey worn jersey stone jersey and cut off khaki pants 
The other, a shortened army tunic gathered in loose folds about his skinny frame. He is giving a description about two boys now. One boy had worn jersey and a cut off khaki pants. The other, a shortened army tunic. Tunic is nothing but a loose fitting. It is just like pajamas. Gathered in loose folds about his skinny frame. Very thin. If you can just look at this, this is sort of the same skinny appearance. Yet, he says, yet, gazing at the two little figures with their brown skins, tangled hair and dark earnest eyes, we felt ourselves strangely attracted. Somehow, author is connected with these two boys. My companion, my companion, author's companion, spoke to the boys, discovered that they were brothers. So these two kids are brothers. Who are they? Nicola, the elder, was 13 years old. Remember this, one mark question. Nicola was 13 years old and Jacopo, who barely came up to the door handle of the car. Remember the car shorter than the door handle, but still he was nearly 12. So Nicola is 13, Jacopo is 12. One mark question, remember this. We bought their biggest basket, then set off toward the town. In spite of Luigi stopping the author, author is somehow connected with these two boys and he purchases the biggest basket of all the baskets and they set off towards the town. Ambience in Verona. As the author moves to the city of Verona, this is just a reference picture. This is how beautiful the city of Verona looks. Now, author is giving a description. It is a sort of a travelogue. And he says, Verona is a lovely city, rich in history, with quiet medieval streets and splendid buildings of an exquisite pale honey color. He is giving a brief description about the city he has visited. Romeo and Juliet, I'm sure you are aware about these characters, famous love characters. Romeo and Juliet are reputed to have lived here. Lived there. Where? In the city of Verona. Bombed in the recent war, it has lost its bridges, but not its gaiety or charm. The city of Verona might have lost its bridges, might have lost its building, but not the charm and gaiety. Its playfulness, so attractive, so meaningful. It is not its charm. Next morning, so this is about Whatever we spoke about was the day before, the previous day. Next morning, coming out of our hotel, we drew up short. We drew up. Now, like, now, just, just take a ride in the city of Verona. There, bent over shoe shine boxes beside the fountain. There is a fountain. Beside the fountain, there is a shoe shine boxes where people sit and shine the shoe, shoe polishers. Fountain in the public square doing a brisk business were our two young friends of the previous afternoon. Previous afternoon, remember, yesterday they were selling fruits. But today what are they doing? They are shining shoes. Where? In the public square near the fountain. And they were busy doing brisk business. Very fast business. We watched for a few moments, then as trade slackened, <laughs> reduced a bit, there was no busy, the trade is coming to an end. We went over, we, author and his companion, they greeted us with friendly faces. Hello sir, please, nice to meet you. Why? Nicola and Jacopo, they are already brothers and have met AJ Cronin, the author. They greeted. I thought you picked fruit for living. I said, who is saying this? Author. Author writes. I thought you picked fruit for a living. Now Nicola says, we do many things, sir. Not just selling fruits. No way. We do many things. We are well versed. Nicola answered seriously. He glanced at us hopefully. Often we show visitors through the town. 
to Juliet Stone and other places of interest. Who is saying this? Nikola is saying, apart from selling fruits, apart from shining the shoes, often we show visitors through the town. We act as guides to Juliet Stone and other places of interest. Tell us, tell me where you want to go. I am going to guide you. All right? Is it so? I smile. You take us along. You take where you can. Now, Nicolo and Jokopo, they decide they are going to take AJ Cronin. As we made the rounds, my interest was again provoked by their remarkable demonor. Demonor? The way they handle their body, the way they are communicating, the way they are convincing the author. They were childish enough. Now he's giving a description. He's coming to a conclusion. He's trying to analyze the character of both Nicola and Jacopo. And then he writes, they were childish enough. Because they are 12 and 13. Remember, Jacopo is 12 and Nicola is 13. They are childish enough and in many ways quite artless. I know they are like, you know, even if they are shining the shoes, maybe they are not professionally up to the mark. But they are doing their best. Jacopo, although his lips were paler than they should have been, paler, he is also telling they are malnutrition or they are weak, than they should have been, was lively as a squirrel. It was like jumping up and down. It's like, you know, sir, you want this, you want that, I'm going to get you. Tell me anything that you want, I'm going to get you anything you want. You show me, you point at me, and you are going to get that thing the very next minute. Lively as a squirrel. Very energetic. Pumped up always. Nicola's smile was steady and engaging. The level of maturity. One year gap. The level of maturity. I want to be a bit mature. I want to show that I am the elder one there. Yet in both these boyish faces, there was a seriousness which one respected. AJ Cronin writes, seriousness, even one respected, even I respected. An air of purpose far beyond their ears. The air of purpose. The purpose, we don't know. Why, why are they working so hard? Why are they dedicated? Why are they selling fruits, shining shoes or taking tourists as guide? We don't know. Let us see it. In the week which followed, we saw them frequently for they proved extremely useful to us. Now, how were they useful? This could be asked for four marks. If we wanted a pack of American cigarettes or seats for the opera or the name of a good restaurant that could provide good ravioli, ravioli is a dish where uh, cheese, pasta and meat is cooked together. Nicola and Jacopo could be relied upon to satisfy our needs. He says, if we wanted American cigarettes, we would call Nicola and Jacopo. If we wanted to buy or to go for the opera, if we wanted to buy something, if we wanted even to go and eat something in a good restaurant, we would call Nicola and Jacopo. For every needs that we wanted to fulfill, these two were very handy. With their usual cheerful competence. Usual. This is usual. And not just gloomy or moody. He says cheerful, happy. Anytime you call, anything you ask, is it so, sir? Give us the money. Come. We are at your service. We are happy to help you. Cheerful mood at the age of 12 and 13. What else did they do? What stuck one most was their unremitting willingness. Unremitting, no pause at all, no compromising for the work. You call us anytime, you give us anything, you ask us anything, we are happy to help you. Unwillingness to work during these summer days under the hot sun, and in the long evenings, when the air blew chill from the mountains, they shined shoes. Remember, this is very important. What else did they do? They shined shoes. 
sold fruit, hawked newspapers, conducted tourists around the town, ran errands, exploited every avenue which the troubled economy of the town left open to them. If they found anything which could get them some money, they would put their hands there. But no cheating. They never cheated. They never bluffed. They were very hard working. Why did they work hard? Why are they working so hard? Do they have any plans of saving money and to do something with it? Let us see it later. One night, we came upon them in the windy and deserted square, resting on the stone pavement beneath the pale arc lights. One night. What were they doing? Deserted. No people at all. Resting on the stone pavement beneath the pale arc lights. Nicola sat up straight. He was standing, sitting, like you know, upright. Okay. His face drawn by fatigue. A bundle of unsold newspapers lay at his feet. He is sitting there, upright, up straight. And at his feet, there is unsold bundle newspaper which is laying at his feet while Jacopo his head pillowed upon his brother's shoulder. If I am Nicola, if I am sitting, my brother Jacopo is lying his head on my shoulder and leaning on my shoulder and taking a nap. Was asleep. He was sleeping leaning on his brother. It was nearly midnight nearly midnight, maybe past 11 past, 11.30, 12, nearly midnight. What were they doing there? Don't know. Why are you out so late, Nicola? Author is asking now. Nicola, why are you so late? Why are you out so late? What are you doing here? He had started sharply as I spoke, but now he gave me his quiet, independent glance, waiting for the last bus from Padua. Padua is a place waiting for the last bus from Padua. We shall sell all our papers when it comes in. Why are they waiting? They are waiting for the last bus from Padua so that they can sell the unsold newspapers which are lying near the foot of Nicola. Now, author is very keen. He is like disturbed. Why are these kids from morning? I am looking at them. They are selling fruits, they are shining shoes, they are taking tourists around the town and till midnight they are keeping up themselves. Why? Must you keep at it so hard? You both look rather tired. Why are you troubling so much? You are, sad. You are so exhausted. Since morning you are working very hard. I don't see you people not doing much of anything for yourself. Why? We are not complaining, sir. Nicola says, Sir, thank you so much. You are so bothered about us. But I am not complaining that I am working so hard. It's okay, sir. No problem. His tone, while perfectly polite, discreates further inquiry. See? You should imagine it. Sir, we are not complaining. That is totally different. We are not complaining, sir. I understand. We are so happy that there is somebody who has for us to take care of. But I am not blaming so. I am very happy with what I am doing. So that tone stops the author from inquiring further. But next morning, when I went over to the fountain to have my shoes shine, I said, Nicola, the way you and Jacobo work, you must earn quite a bit. Right? Don't lie. The way you two are working so much, my God. There is something. Tell us. Tell me why you are working so hard. You spend nothing on clothes. Now, author has observed each and everything about these two kids. He says, you have spent nothing. Actually, I have not seen you people wearing very good clothes. What are you going to do with the money? You eat little enough. When I see you having a meal, it's usually black bread and figs. Not even something delicious. Black bread and figs. Is it going to fulfill your tummy? Tell me, what do you do with your money? Now, author is very keen. 
he wants to know desperately. So he asks, what are you going to do with the money? He colored deeply under his sunburn, then grew pale. His gaze fell to the ground. Sir, don't ask us what we are going to do. His, his expression is such that he has money, but he cannot utilize that money for what he wants. Maybe we don't know why he is collecting or saving or earning so much of money. You must be saving up to emigrate to America, I suggested. Now, author is saying, you must be saving up. Do you want to go to America? Because America is, is like, you know, it is a fashion hub. America is like, it's a city, the dream city for everybody to make money. He looked at me sideways, spoke with an effort. Sir, no. And spoke with an effort. You think so that we are going to emigrate to America? We should greatly like to go to the States. But here, at present, we have other plans. We like to go to America, but other plans today. We have some other plans. What plans? Author is very keen now. Again interested. He is digging more of answers from Nicola and Jacopo. He smiled uncomfortably with that remote air which never failed to baffle me. He smiled uncomfortably. Sir, sorry. Don't ask us. Just plans, sir. He answered in a low voice. Just, you know, that's too. Plans there. But, sorry, we cannot tell you our plans. Well, okay. Oh, da. Okay. Well, I said, we are leaving on Monday. We, remember, author and his companion. We are leaving on Monday. Is there anything I can do for you before we go? Another idea. Should I do something for you? Nanka in the Yanadru. Sadhya Adre Madhvoda. Can I help you out with something? What are they going to do? Are they going to take favor from the author? Nicola shook his head, but suddenly Jacopo's nostrils squared like a puppy's and he piped up eagerly. Nicola is showing his level of maturity. But what about Jacopo? Sir, is it so? You are going to help us? Yeah? Okay, I am going to ask you a favor. Sir, he says, sir, he bursts out. Every Sunday, remember, every Sunday, we make a visit to the country, to Paleta, which is 30 kilometers from here, from Verona. How many kilometers? 30 kilometers. Paleta. Remember, Padua is totally different and Paleta is different. Don't get confused. They were waiting, they were waiting for the bus to appear from Padua to sell the newspapers. But Poleta, they are going to visit, which is 30 kilometers away from Verona. Usually, we hire bicycles. How do we do? Hire bicycles and pedal the bicycle. Bicycling. 30 kilometers. But tomorrow, but just, since you ask, but tomorrow, since you are so kind, you might send us in your car. One favor. Who asked? Not Nicola, Jacopo. I had already told Luigi he might take the Sunday off. Oh my God. Now author is saying, Arre, bapre. I have already given off to Luigi, my driver, my cautious driver. So what shall we do now? However, I answered, I will drive you out myself. No, don't worry. I am going to drive you both myself. There was a pause. Nicola was glaring at his young brother in vexation. Really? You are asking our tourist guide, our mentor, to drive us to Poleta? Yeah? Really? That expression. So, what happens next? We could not think of troubling you, sir. Nicola says this. Sir, we cannot think of troubling you. You are so kind. It won't be any trouble. He bit his lip. Then, in a rather put out tone, he said, Very well. Okay. If that is the case, very well then. Now, author says, It won't be any trouble, Nicola and Jacopo. Don't worry. Driving you for Poleta, which is this 30 kilometers away by myself, I would be happy. I would be happy to join you. Maybe author willingly or unwillingly accepted this. But will it help him later? Will he get a chance to know more about 
Nicola and Jacopo. Will he get the answers for all his questions? Let us see in the next session. That is it for today's session. We'll meet you in the next session and we'll see whether all the answers of author will be answered in the next session. Keep reading the chapter Two Gentlemen of Verona and I'm sure I've already guaranteed you by the end of this chapter, you will get to know why the chapter is named as Two Gentlemen of Verona. We'll meet you in the next session. Until then, keep reading. Have a good day.